Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hey Performance Lab, and in this video, we're going to answer another reader question. This question is, I have a question about contact points for hitting inside versus outside pitches. What's your opinion on how you should set up your tee for working both of these locations? This is a great question, and this is one I, I got in from email, and I thought I would I've gotten it quite a few times. It'd be nice to just put in a post and that when people ask, I can just send that out to them instead of having to explain it. So here's the general rule in setting up for, uh, the tee for the uh, pitch depth, whether it's inside, middle, or away. Now, I know this requires some visuals. I will take a picture and during this video, I will put it up either here or over here so that you can see that image while I'm actually talking you through it because I realize that it would be kind of tough to do that in this video setting without actually being out of the field. So on the inner third of the plate, realize that obviously when you set the tee up, you want to be on the inside, the inner third of the plate. The other thing that you want to make sure you're doing is at stride landing. So all these, these positions are at stride landing. Okay, It's not at the start of the swing. So you, you have to get your hitter at the stride landing and then you can kind of figure out how far up, middle, or deep you want to put the tee. So on the inner third of the plate, balls on the inner third, you want the ball to be set up, whether you're using a backspin tee or a tanner tee or whatever tee, you want it to be set up about six inches to a foot out in front of the stride foot. Okay, Again, lined up on the inner third of the plate, but in relation to where the foot is, you want it to be about six inches to 12 inches. Perry Husband actually says when, when we're using the front arm shape, we're locking that front arm out. For some players, it could be as much as 18 inches. So it's going to depend on the age of the hitter. Obviously, if they're seven years old, you're not going to put the ball, if you're working inner third, you're not going to put the ball 18 inches out in front of them. But maybe a high school or college or pro guy or gal, you, can, you want to basically use your common sense to where you need to put that. And it might take a few swings for you to find, find that sweet spot because it all depends on the arm length. And seven-year-old's arm is definitely not as long as a 22-year-old's arm. So inner third, about six to 18 inches out in front of the stride foot. Middle third, you're gonna be somewhere around the stride foot, in line with it to about six inches, give or take, or three to six inches, three to eight inches or so, give or take, but somewhere at middle middle should be around the stride foot or in line with the stride foot over the middle third of the plate. Now the outer third part of the plate, you want to set it up obviously on the outer third and it's going to be deeper off the stride foot. So it's going to be farther back closer to the catcher. So you want to make sure that that's going to be, again, it's going to be a range. I know you probably don't like ranges. It would be nice for me to just say, well, we'll do it six inches from, but it's all going to depend on your hitter. The younger the hitter, the less uh, discrepancy between staggering these balls, the, the less distance between the contact points because the arm, the front arm shape or, or length isn't as long as a 22 year old's. So it's going to be, the range is going to be between six and uh, six and 12 inches I would say or three and 12 inches just again play around with it but what should happen is when they hit it when they hit it optimally they should be on if it's on the outer third correctly should be going to right center field center center inner inner third it should be about left center again the farther out front you you, you move it the the more they're going to pull it off those lines so you want to make sure that's kind of a ballpark of where you want to put it. Think about it this way, this is what I tell my hitters when we're talking depth, hitting depth, whether opposite field, middle, or pulling the ball, is think about it like a pinball machine. Now some hitters don't know or never played on a pinball machine, but you can show them. But think about the flappers on a pinball machine. If I had the left side flapper or a right-handed, say if they were a right-handed hitter. So if I want to hit the ball across the table opposite field, then I'm gonna let that ball travel deeper and then my flapper is gonna hit that ball deeper. If I wanna pull it across the table, then that ball has to be more inside or coming more where the flapper is and that flapper has to hit the ball more out in front in order to get it to go. Now obviously it's a little bit different when we're talking about a hitter and a flesh and blood human being, but the bat is like the flapper and the human body is just an extension of that. So that is, how you set up the tees. Now, a couple things that you want to do when you're working and training off of a tee, because there's some people out there anti-tee, they're never never tee, never batting teers. 
and working on the tee has its place. You shouldn't be something that you do all the time, but if you're gonna work on the tee, make sure you use what I call the art of variance. So you want to vary where the pitch height is and the pitch depth. So when we're, whenever we're on the tee, if we're on a backspin tee or a tanner tee, we have our hitters will, every swing they take, after every swing, we move the tee up or down. It doesn't have to be a lot, just, just a little bit, just giving them a different height to it. And then what we'll do in say a five swing round is the odd swings, the one, the three, and the five swings, or the, the, the first three swings, we'll actually have them swing inside. We'll have the tee set up on the inner third and we're moving the ball up and down. And then the last two swings, we'll move it to the outer third and we'll move the swing up and down. And then the next round, the next round of five, we'll reverse that. So the first three swings are on the outer third, moving it up and down. We'll move it to the inner third and then for the last two swings and we'll move that up and down. So you wanna make sure that you're varying the ball, whether it's height or depth on the tee when you're working off the tee because the pitcher is not going to be throwing it in the same spot every time. So the tee does, definitely has its limitations it does not obviously simulate a moving pitch, but we can work on the tee, whether it's mechanics, we can work on it on getting hitters to understand pitch depth and where you're hitting the ball deeper to hit at the other field or pulling the ball. We can work on it using, especially overload training is really good. We can set the tee really, really high and inside up and in so we can get them to work on some things with the overload bat to get them not getting under the ball. So there's some cool stuff we can do with the tee, just make sure we're smarter with it. And the difference between a backspin tee and a tanner tee or an, uh, any, any other tee, because every other tee is, is way different than the backspin tee, there's an experiment I did, a swing experiment where I hit, I took 100 swings off a backspin tee and 100 swings off a regular tee, and I split those 100 swings up, I mixed them. So I had the, say, each A, B were split into 25 swing chunks. So I would say, say A were backspin tee swings, I would go A, B, B, A, and then the, and then the last round of 100, I would go B, A, A, B and the A represented backspin T swings, the B represented regular T swings. And I, I did a little, took a picture of our, the cage, identical pictures of the cage, or one picture of the cage, or identical pictures, and then plotted when I'd take some swings off the backspin T where the ball would go, and then I would do the same on the Tanner T. So at the end, I had two, and I will link to this uh, below this video. If you're watching on YouTube, you can click the link directly below the video to go to the post, and I'll have a link to that swing experiment. But what the difference was, was off the backspin tee, the 100 swings looked like a tornado or a tree. The swings off the regular tee kind of looked blockish. There were some up, up above, the top of the tee, or top of the, the cage, but it was more block-ish. And what was interesting is the backspin tee effect is what I call it. After changing from a backspin tee swing to a regular tee swing, the backspin tee effect, where I was still, I was still driving the ball up, lasted for about 10 swings or so, and then the last, 15 of the 25 swings on the regular tee, we'd, I'd notice that the ball would start to kind of drag down. Then when I go back to the backspin tee, it would go back up again, and it was just interesting backspin tee effect. So then this video, we talked about, we answered the question, reader question, I have a question about contact points for hitting inside versus outside pitches. What's your opinion on how you should set up your tee for working both of these locations? I hope this video answered that question. Make sure we're swinging smarter by moving better. And before I let you go, the Hitting Performance Lab wants to know, did you know repeatable hitting power does not start in the hips? Have you heard the expressions, load and explode the hips, power comes from the hips? Well, we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study that will show you how we added 48 feet of batted ball distance instantly, and it's not all about the hips. Click here now to get the video while it's still free.